Tragedy struck the MSBL World Series last Friday morning when 25-plus St. Louis Spikes manager Jay Davis was killed in a single car crash on Estrella Parkway in Goodyear, Arizona. He was 34 years old. Jay started the Spikes team in 2002, and he's been a part of the St. Louis MSBL since that time, according to league president Mike Martin. Jay was a great guy and a terrific father, Mike said. He leaves behind his wife, Jessica, and two sons, Benjamin, 10 years old, and Cooper, 3 years old. He was a huge supporter of his son's baseball team, the Prospects, and an avid St. Louis Cardinals fan. Yesterday, the following message was posted on the St. Louis MSBL website. Beloved Jay, because you were taken from us so suddenly, we are all devastated, deeply saddened, and hurting tremendously with your passing. You have touched the lives of so many in the St. Louis baseball community. Known simply as Mr. Baseball to many, you were a great husband, father, manager, player, and above all, a friend to all that knew you. We will never forget your passion, our compassion, for the game you so dearly loved. Our only comfort is knowing that you are in a better place looking down on us. You will forever be in our hearts, thoughts, and prayers anytime the game is mentioned or we take the field, rain or shine. Our deepest sympathy and condolences are with your family now and forever. All of the men of the St. Louis Men's Senior Baseball League. Hello and welcome to the MSBL MABL World Series Daily News Show. I'm Joel Becker. And I'm Amber Belletta. Week 3 of the 25th anniversary of the World Series is halfway done. With teams jockeying for playoff positions, we'll have game results and standings coming right up. Plus, we'll talk with managers, players, and a look back at last week's trade show. And our last live game webcast of the tournament was yesterday. We saw the 45 and over Woodbat American Central Coast Tigers take on the 3 and 2 Rangers. Let's head right up to the action at Tempe Diablo Stadium. We start off in the bottom of the first inning. Rangers up to bat already leading in the game 1 0. Kurt Schmidke with the base hit to right center field. Two runs are going to come home, and the Rangers. Up in the game, 1-0, now up 3-0. They will extend that in the bottom of the second. Two on, two out, Kimo Flores with the fly ball into left field. Left fielder can't handle it off his glove. Two runs again will come in to score. Two innings gone by, Rangers already up 5-0. Top of the third, Tigers trying to come back. Second and third and one out, Mike Jennings, and he will lift one for a sacrifice fly just deep enough to get the run home as Bill Marshall comes in to score. Tigers on the board, it's five to one. Bottom of the third though, base is loaded, nobody out. Alex Garcia, nice stab there by Steve Tolley, the pitcher, gets the force out at home. The throw back to get Garcia, hits Garcia in the calf, so none able to get the double play, but no run score. Now a five to two, the bottom of the fifth. Rangers second and third, one out Schmidtke again, the sacrifice fly, Tom Doherty comes in to score. It is now six to one. Top of the sixth, Ernie Salinas on third. One out, Doug Wolf. Bill Mann will hang a curveball and he will send one into left field. That's gonna get down for a double. Salinas comes in six to two now. Dale Craig is the next batter and he will now shoot one between short and third. Donnie Schuler, who was running for Wolf, comes in to score. We're six three, Tigers coming back. Bottom of the sixth. Alex Garcia on second. Rex Cox has been added to the bottom of the lineup. Little pop up there into shallow left field. Nobody's gonna get it. And Garcia comes around to score. It is seven to three. We go to the top of the ninth. Base is loaded, nobody out. Tying run at the plate in the form of James Hickson. He will ground into the four, six, three double play. One run does score, but they will get no more. Seven to four, the final score. After the game, Tom Prendergast and I talked to Rangers manager, Laura Doherty. Hi, Joel Becker here with Tom Prendergast and Laura Doherty from the three and two Rangers, 45 and over American division team. And we saw in our live game webcast, the Rangers defeat 
their opponents seven to four. And uh, well, uh, we're with the managers, so let's get right to it. A good win, and uh, that's your first win of the tournament. A much needed win. Yeah, um, yeah we fell. Be I mean, we fell down 0 and 2 yesterday after our doubleheader, and not any of myself or 31 guys expected that to happen. So we came out in playoff mode today. And uh, it was definitely a much needed victory. This Rangers team we talked about during the game seems to come from all over. We do. We represent seven states and one and two countries. And how did that happen? <laughs> you know, originally we were the Long Island Rangers, and we were strictly a New York team. And as the guys got older and uh, uh, things started falling apart, we ended up merging with uh, Glenn Powers and his Seattle team. And. We had a really great nucleus of those two guys, those two uh, states there, and then as we got better and better, we started picking up better talent from all the different states. So you mentioned that there was two countries involved, the other one being Canada. Canada, yes. And I'm guessing a lot of those guys from Vancouver. No, actually, we only have one player from Canada. Uh, okay. He's a pitcher, but um, I would say the the majority of our players are New York, uh, Seattle, and California, and then we have some from Arizona, some from Texas, some from Oklahoma. And then Canada. Now your husband plays on this team. My Tom. husband does. Yes, Tom Doherty, number thirty. And uh, how? What's that like managing your husband? Oh, he hates it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, not so much. He, he's okay with it here um, at home. It, I manage him at home too on Long Island, and uh, he hates it a lot more there. But here, it's you know we have we have a job to do, and you know everyone knows what their role is, and um, with thirty-one guys, you need to know what your role is. Laura, there's another player you manage from Long Island who's not here. Yes. Brian Sigler, yes. Of course. <laughs> Hi, Brian. Uh, yeah, Brian plays for me home on Long Island, and uh, he is without question one of my best players sure. and an and all around fantastic guy. And I'm not just saying that's a kiss up. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, you guys came into this game with a game plan. Uh, the first run of the game, you tried to squeeze it in. Yes. As a, uh, as a team philosophy, we play a lot of small ball. Um, we have. Um, is saying we like to create chaos and, and havoc on the field at all times. So our three hitters are bunt, our four hitters are bunt. Um, you know, we we squeeze in all sorts of random places. We we do. We we like to get keep the other team totally confused about what we're doing, and it's worked for us a lot. Joel and I were saying during the broadcast that uh, we've seen a lot of games down here, and you're like the second woman manager. Second? Who is the first? That we've had down here. Wow, I, didn't, I thought I was the only one in the country. <laughs> I think in years past, well, Tina. Tina, right. actually, with the Sacramento Solons. Wow, okay. So, um, but your situation's a little different. Okay, how so? And the fact that you actually do this at home. Yes. And you've been managing for a long time. I have been, yes. I've been managing in the MSBL in Long Island for eight seasons now. And that started because? Uh, I was actually an assistant manager under Bill Rattazzi with the Long Island, uh, New York Rangers at home. And he taught me everything he knew, my complete mentor. And uh, eventually, as I grew, I was able to get my own team, the Long Island Blue Jays. And uh, we played 25 and over on Long Island. And of course. we're very good. Well, you're doing a great job. <laughs> Thank and you, you. You mentioned you have 31 players? On my, on my Arizona team, yes. That's a lot. It is a lot. And we actually lost a couple to injury, so we were expecting to have a few more. Wow. Yeah, we lost two to injury right before the week the tournament started. Is that tough to juggle? All the, because I'm, yes. everybody wants playing time when they come out here. It's true. I mean, and everyone pays a lot of money to come out here and travel and take time off of work. Um, it's. It, again, it comes back to you, the guys have to know what their role is before they even get on the plane. And it's, we, again, we're not built to be fair to everyone, and I hate to say that, but we're here to win. I mean, we have two championship rings. We're going for a third right now. Uh, we go to Vegas. We just won Vegas in March. You know, if they want to be part of the winning culture, they need to know what their role is and, and how we're going to go about doing it. I like the way she wears her championship. <laughs> she certainly does, Joel. She wears it well. <laughs> All right, then. So, well, we are. Uh, we're congratulations on your first win of the tournament, Thank you. and uh, you still got uh, quite a bit more pool yes. play to go. Yeah, and three more games. Hopefully, uh, finish four and two. Get a, get us a bye, and then. Yeah, they won't touch us in the playoffs. All right. Well, congratulations, and <laughs> thank we thank you. you for spending some time with us. I appreciate it. Thank All you, right. guys. For Tom Prendergast, this is Laura Doherty. I'm Joel Becker. More game shots coming up in the show, and we'll hear from Amber Belletto. But first, here's a look at the scores and standings after yesterday's action at the World Series. <laughs>
Let's check in with Amber Belletto from the trade show last week here at Tempe Diablo Stadium. Amber Belletto here, standing in here in the novelty shop with Kyle Drone of Dinger. How you doing? I'm doing well. You? Good. I'm doing great. I just wanted to check in with you. We met you at the beginning of the trade show, and now it's near the end. It's mm -hmm. like the last day, I think. How did you guys do? Uh, well, it started off a little bit slow, but once uh, a lot of the uh, traffic started coming through, things really picked up. The last four or five days have been really great, and uh, appreciate everything Vic's done, and really looking forward to next year. Awesome. I, there seems like there was a lot more people this year. I haven't been here. This is my first year. What, what do you think? Oh, uh, totally agree. Uh, the last probably three years, it's kind of slowly declined and this has been by far the most food, foot traffic we've seen in four years. Awesome, very cool. What was your favorite part of the trade show? Uh, I mean the Players Club, Club was cool. Um, There's a lot of new stuff this yeah, year, yeah, right? Just, just, yeah, trying it out. Uh, just Vic being attentive to us and caring mm -hmm. about you know how things are going for everybody here was, uh, was huge for us. It makes us feel like we're appreciated coming out. And you, you know. are, absolutely. You are. You're a huge part of the World Series. Did you get to watch the Legends game at all? Yeah, we did. That was very cool. Yeah, yeah very interesting. Uh just a fun time. Yeah, I got to interview Raleigh Fingers, which oh, is really fun. Very cool. <laughs> yeah, well, thank you very much for your time, Kyle, and we look forward to talking to you next year. All right, we'll see you next year. Thank you. Cool. Thanks, Amber. Week three action from the World Series. We've got more game shots. Back out to Tempe Diablo Stadium, 45 and over Woodbat American. The Rebel Phillies taking on the Central Coast Tigers in this one. We start things off with the Phillies already up 7-2, to bottom of the seventh. Bob Lord up for the Tigers. And the base hit up the middle, try and get things going for Central Coast. That brings up Sean Knopf with one out. And he will lift one into center field. Center fielder calling off the right fielder to make the catch. The throw back to first, not in time. A little up the line as well. One on and two outs. James Hickson with the ground ball to third. Over to first for the routine play. Threat is over. Top of the eighth now. Still 7-2 for the Phillies. Jeff James 
and he will hit the ground ball past the diving pitcher, but the second baseman gloves and throws one away. And then after not being able to make the play on the last one, with Mike Domino at the plate, the pitcher this time with the comebacker, he will underhand it to first, and the inning ends. The Tigers do tack on another run, but they come up short in the comeback. Phillies win it 7-3 to three after the game. Amber Boletto talked with the winners. All right, all right, I have an interview to do, so quiet, quiet. quiet. <laughs> oh, all right, action. Uh, Amber Boletto here, standing here with Danny Graham, the winning pitcher of the Phillies. How you doing? Good, thank you. Good, awesome. Well, congratulations on a very huge win for you guys. Thank you. It was a great play by the whole team. Put the ball in play, and the defense made the plays. Yeah, absolutely. You almost had a shutout there, and then they tried to make a comeback, those those jerks. <laughs> <laughs> no, they're a good team. They played uh, really well. No, a, lot of, a lot of really good guys out on their team. Yeah. They swung the bat well, so yeah. things went our way today. Yeah, they tried, but you guys overcame, absolutely, yeah. and came with a W. Well, congratulations. Good job on all your hard work. And when are you playing next? Uh, we play tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock okay. at uh, Papago, I believe. Okay. No? Salt River. Salt River. Salt River, sorry. Uh, no worries. It's okay. <laughs> your, your team's correcting you. <laughs> they got me covered. They got my back all game long. Awesome. Thanks. Well, you have a great team here. Congratulations again, and good luck tomorrow. Thank you. You're Appreciate welcome. it. Okay. Amber Boletto here, standing here with Paul, the manager of the winning team, the Phillies. How you doing, Paul? Wonderful. <laughs> I have a fantastic group of guys. Couldn't be happier. Very resilient, so it was a great day. Absolutely. Uh, any day that you win is a good day, I'm sure. Any star players for you today? Dan Graham what, dominated the game. Just went outstanding on the hill. Never. I love the way he throws. Mechanically, he's just an awesome pitcher. Also, his poise out there. We made a few mistakes behind him, mm -hmm. and he just goes right on. And You just love to see a pitcher that doesn't get bothered. Because yeah. we're a little older, we're a little slower. <laughs> we're not as quick as we used to be. Mm -hmm. But it was a beautiful performance by Dan. He carried us on his shoulders. Yeah, that's what that's what a good pitcher does. Oh yeah, <laughs> that was pitching dominates when you got a guy like Dan. Oh, absolutely. Well, shout out to Dan and uh, good luck tomorrow for your guys' game. Thank you. Of course. Thank you for the interview. Of course, thank you. <laughs> Back to you. Well, Amber, things are going quickly here at the 25th anniversary of the MSBL MABL World Series, and I know you're looking forward to tonight. I am Halloween. You gonna go uh, trick or treating? In a manner of speaking, if I do, you'll be coming with me, right? Well, absolutely. Uh, just. Keep an eye out for the Invisible Man. Ah, that's right. And you keep an eye out for... For uh, what? What are you going to go as? You'll just have to wait and see. But I guarantee you it's going to turn heads. Okay then, guys. Look for Amber somewhere in Phoenix. Trick or treating. That shouldn't be too hard. Just look for uh, sexy what? It's Halloween and I'm a girl, so it's going to be a sexy something. Okay, that about <laughs> wraps things up for today's show. We hope you enjoy today's events, and we thank you for letting us bring them to you. This has been the MSBL MABL World Series Daily News Show. I'm Joel Becker. And I'm Amber Boletto. Thanks for watching. We'll see you tomorrow.